Right. So let's now play the next time I tried, well that one seemed too sleepy, so I decided to take the theme and do kind of a more up-tempo version of the theme, and I hope that's what's next, because that's what I just introduced. Let's see. first one I ever wrote for the movie. You see, um, uh, that was what you just heard. I tried that one, but I did it in a very kind of circusy way. That's the thing about a good theme, you know. If you're going to have a theme, it has to work in all kinds of ways, so it can be circusy. He, David Yates didn't like that. He said it sounds like a circus, um, and I didn't necessarily disagree with him. So now we've done, we've done two versions of the theme that didn't work. By the way, that um, yeah, that was version 14 that you heard. I have done all kinds of other versions that I didn't think were even good enough to play. So then we tried a whole new pitch. I wrote a theme. Um, early on that I didn't share with anybody that later became the, one of the biggest scenes in the movie called uh, When Newt Releases the Thunderbird, which if you haven't seen the movie, you'll see it soon. And it's also used as a kind of a romantic theme. And I thought, well, let's try that. So I did a version of this theme. that kind of a thing. So um, let's listen to that version. Now um, also pay attention to the evolving sound of Hedwig's theme because it keeps changing.
So that was just, you know, uh, that was kind of a, that was when I was starting to get a little desperate, you know, a little panicky, because that was three months into the writing, and I still didn't have the theme. And the one thing we kept looking for was a piece of music that would, as David Yates put it, announce a great adventure, that a great exotic adventure. You wanted it to be like the doors opening into a whole new world. We obviously hadn't found that yet, but we still kept going at it. So, what did I do next? I did the, yes. Then I wrote another theme, which was used in another big sequence of the movie. And it was much bigger orchestrally and had more of a celebratory kind of quality to it. And um, we tried it this way. One more time, please. Next one. Before I play you where I finally ended up, um, maybe now's a good time to do that. And maybe we can probably survive without microphones, yes? Uh, these are all still your sequence demos, right? These are all demos, yeah. Mm -hmm. These are my sequence demos. Anybody have any thoughts or questions so far? No? Okay. So, um, we're coming to the end of the, the process, and this was in... Um, probably July, late July of the summer, and I've been working at this point on the movie for five months. And as far as I knew, we were going to go with that last theme that you heard. Um, and I still felt that that wasn't, uh, wasn't the one. So I was, but David had not asked me for any more. And then one day I was just sitting in the studio in London, and um, 
I started to play around with this idea. what sounds like just kind of a boring thing, but when you see it to picture, it works pretty well, um, that I can use that and exploit that very much more in the next movies. So um, anyway, let's play the final version. 